Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to look at how to translate a digital drawing into an analog drawing. In other words, take a floor plan that you were given um, that may be printed or, or whatnot and to measure it and convert those measurements into a analog drawing using pen and paper. So first you need source material and for this exercise um, I had given my students the Barcelona Pavilion by Mies van der Rohe. If you aren't familiar with it, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, but it is um, a, a simple exercise to understand, at least as I assigned it, it's a simple exercise to understand stereotomic mass, tectonic assemblies, and linear components. Um, and, but in this way, we're, I'm trying to teach them a couple of things with one drawing. One, I want them to understand how to convert um, units of measure. So in this case, uh, the, they provided a graphic scale at the bottom. And that graphic scale, and I'll zoom in on that uh, so you can see that a little bit better. Uh, oops. So that graphic scale goes from 0 to 10 meters. Um, and you can convert that um, online pretty easily to imperial feet and inches. And that converts to 32.8 feet, which is 32, point, or 32 feet 9 inches or something like that. Um, so it, I, I'm not looking for hyper accuracy. We're not building this thing. It's just how to convert uh, metric to English. And then using that same image, um, what I what I would highly recommend is that you measure the drawing you have from the graphic scale provided and then uh, create either digitally or physically uh, an image like this that has dimensions on it, uh, right? So in this case, I, I, I measured um, these things, I converted them to feet and inches, and then I went around the plan and measured the elements so that I didn't have to keep going back and forth. So that would be my recommendation is that, that you, whatever source material you have, you measure it first, and then when you translate it into the drawing form, you don't have to keep going back to the source material and measuring. So um, I have set up my, my camera. Um, so I'm going to show you how to draw, um, or how to, using the measurements you have, how to draw at a scale. Uh, and for today's exercise, we're using the 332nd scale. Um, so that's the numbers at the top, right, the smaller numbers. And if you scroll all the way to the back, it goes to 124 feet. Now, if you remember the source material that I showed, um, the drawing, the total width of that drawing is 179 feet 4 inches. So that's, um, that's probably, well, not probably, uh, this is a foot ruler, uh, or a foot long, foot wide, this thing. So if this is 124 plus um, another, what, 55 feet, so it should come to right there. So that, that should be the total length. It should, it should be a little over 17 inches. Um, so that's the plan. We're going to draw out um, a 17 inch long thing. Um, first pro tip, if you're using trace paper on a roll like this, um, I highly recommend that you um, pull out the, the, you know, more than you need, you know, let's say 18 inches or something. And then when you tape it down to your drawing surface, you should be taping it down, um, curl down, right? So notice the paper has a natural curl to it um, because it's been rolled up. You should flip that over and draw on the back side. Um, it does a bunch of things for you, but more import most importantly, it prevents the drawing from curling back around and making life difficult. Now I'm using drafting dots to hold my paper down. Um, so you can use painter's tape, you can use drafting dots, whatever you'd like. Um, so there's, this is what I'm going to use. And then, um, and, oh, and by the way, uh, hopefully you're using a T-square or, or the like. Um, and if you're doing that, then it should make your lines parallel um, to your image um, pretty easily. 
but if you're not it makes a life a little bit more difficult because you have to make sure that you're drawing 90 degree angles when you're drawing um, perpendicular lines so um, but for today's demonstration obviously I'm not going to draw the whole plan I'm just going to start drawing out segments um, so that you understand the process and then you would complete that process with the whole plan in theory so the, for, the other tip pro tip I would give you is draw everything in pencil first right so I'm using a lead holder I've had this for gosh probably 30 years um, you, you can use different uh, weights of lead uh, I think this is a HB if I'm not mistaken but um, you know it's it's like the middle of the road hardness of graphite um, the harder the graphite, um, the easier the line to see. I'm sorry, the softer the graphite. So if you go into into the 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, all etc., um, it's it's um, easy, it's it creates a fatter line, a darker line. If you go into the H's, it creates a lighter line because it's harder graphite. It's harder to lay down uh, an, an edge. Um, so. I'm going to show you the, uh, and I'm going to encourage you to draw everything in pen, uh, pencil first or graphite, and then overlay another sheet and trace the the graphite pencil lines with ink. Um, so ink on vellum, ink on trace is much more legible, and when you're doing your photo documentation, um, it's much easier to see. So um, I'm just going to start drawing using the source material that I have, and again. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for that dimension uh, at the top. So I'm going to draw that first uh, parallel line, parallel to my, my sheet anyway, uh, which is 29 feet, 8 and a half inches. Okay. So um, actually, and again, I should be using a T square. So. Sorry for that, I thought I had that already. Um, and knowing that I'm going to trace over this again um, in pen, um, I, I'm not going to worry too much about, actually, let me move my camera a little bit. I'm not going to worry too much about the, you know, the length of the line. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Okay, so there's, oh wow, you can barely see that. Um, maybe I should use a fatter, fatter line for this exercise. I'm actually going to use a red marker um, just so it shows up on the screen a little bit better but you would be using a graphite pencil right so there's my marker and um, somewhere around here using my triangle and my my t-square I'm just gonna make a tick mark now remember, it doesn't matter how sloppy this page is, although you, you want to keep it kind of clean, because you're going to overlay another sheet on top of it and trace that line work uh, when you're done. So this sheet can be a little sloppy. We used to call them construction lines. So it wasn't super, it didn't matter how um, clean they were because you're going to trace them over anyway. So this is my first draft. Now, I have this line, and using the source material, again, um, remembering back, I'm looking for this dimension, this dimension right here, 29 and a half. So I'm going to draw this line first. Okay. So at 29, 29 feet, eight inches, right? So this is, there's 28. So the next tick mark on the top would be 29 feet. So that's my 29 feet. Now, I don't know if you can see this or hopefully you can I'll try to try, try something. I don't know, you can't really see it. Anyway, uh, between the zero and the marker that says 3.30 seconds, those, each one of those little tick marks represents um, a foot. I'm sorry, an inch, not a foot, excuse me. So if you're looking for 29 feet 8, you would just count out 8 little ticks. Or in this case, I think they're uh, 2 inches per tick. Uh, just, just count out 4 of those ticks anyway. Um, and that should give you 29 feet 8. Um, we're not going to worry about the half inch right now. Again, I'm not looking for constructability. I'm just looking for um, you know close to accurate. So I'm first going to measure, and the way I do this, and let me um, change my camera position to get a lot closer to 
see the drawing. Okay, so I'm first going to measure the 28. So there's my 28. Okay, and I'm going to move one more over to the 29, and that's where I start on that tick mark, that 29 feet. I'm going to come all the way over to zero, and then using my pencil, I'm going to count out. So there's one, two, three, four, five, eight, one, two, sorry, I'm going blind. One, two, three, four, five, six tick marks. So uh, if those six tick, six tick marks equal a foot, half of those would be six inches. So the another, so so one, two, three, four, the fourth tick mark, which is right about there, represents 29 feet eight. So I've got the tick mark. I'm using my parallel. Um, again, I'm using my parallel my T square, T square, and my uh, triangle to get a 90 degree tick mark or 90 degree measurement. Okay. Now that's that is that that's the total 29 feet and I'm gonna write it down in here just to remember 29 feet 8 inches so I know have I have that first line drawn right now again using the source material um, I would have measured uh, the downturn and so where that tick mark is and and drawn that at, at scale I don't know what that is yet because I didn't measure it, but I am going to draw the other length. Um, so again, I'm just I'm not super worried about the the length of this line because it's a construction line. I'm just going to draw super long, and I'm going to measure out the next measurement that I'm looking for is this one, right? So 72 feet one. So on my on my ruler, or I'm sorry, my, my scale, 72 feet is right there, right? So from zero to 72 feet, that's how long that line should be. So I'm going to measure from zero to 72 feet. Man, that was a pretty good guess. It is right there using my graphite. I don't need my triangle for this one because it's parallel to the sheet edge. So I'm going to use my T-square and drag over. And now that dimension or that line is there. And so that's 72 feet. Um, I ignored the one inch because it's 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 almost impossible to, to see that. I mean, the length of the, wine, the line is uh, several inches uh, at scale. So um, that's okay. But so anyway, um, I've drawn now these two edges, right? So I have the one edge, which is um, the very top source material, the top of the, um, the bathroom in uh, uh, Mies van der Rohe's uh, Barcelona Pavilion. And then I draw, drew the bottom, or sorry, the left edge, which is, um, I guess, the west elevation of that, of that building. So that's it. Um, and I'm, it's, I'm not going to draw the entire floor plan, but you understand the process that I'm that I'm going through. I've I have the source material that I've dimensioned and referenced while I'm drawing my um, analog representation of that. And then one, let's say this is complete. I'm going to lay down another sheet, and then using my straight edge again, I'm going to um, draw in pen, um, and then this time with a much cleaner line. Um, actually, let me, let me just example of that real quick. Let's see what I'm talking about. So this time I'm not going to use, um, and, and normally you, you would tear this. Well, let me do it. I'm going to stop. I'll just give you the whole process. This is a longer video than I normally like to make, but, but I'll give you the whole process. All right, so again, draw a curl side down and add um, two more drafting dots, or at least two anyway. Um, I usually don't pin the bottom when I'm tracing just so I can lift it up and see something that I might not be able to see. Um, this is also a good time to use your, your light table if you have one. 
Uh, I do have one, um, but I don't have it plugged in right now, so I'm not going to be able to use it. Um, but the fact that I drew in red before makes it a lot easier to see. Okay, so now I have my sheet down and I have the bottom open so I can flip if I need to. Um, using my triangle, you do not draw with your scale. Using my triangle and the fine point, right, of the pen, I'm going to trace those two lines where they intersect the vertical. Right? No extension, because this one, this is my final draft in theory, so I don't need the extra line work. I'm only drawing the things that I want to keep and present. Right? Okay, so same thing on that, that on this uh, west elevation wall. I don't need any extensions. I'm just going to drag out. Nice, crisp, clean edge. And there we go. Right? So you see the difference? This is my rough draft, and it's just to get my measurements converted from uh, digital to analog. And then once I have that, I add a new layer of trace, and I trace over it with a very crisp, ni nice black line. That's it. Uh, I'm going to create another video, so please be on the lookout for how to create a graphic scale. Uh, and I'll be using the 330 second scale because that's the plan, or that's the drawing, the, the skies we drew at here. Thanks for watching. If you found this video valuable, please like and share it with others. If you're not already a subscriber, I invite you to subscribe to my channel by selecting the profile picture below. This will take you to my channel with videos like these and many others on topics such as Revit, SketchUp, Analog Tools. And videos such as these and the playlist next to you that are specific to this topic. Have a great rest of your day.